Welcome everyone to the Cybers webinar series. I'm Tina Lee, Cybers' User Engagement Officer. Today's webinar is a preview of the new Discovery Environment user interface presented by Sri Ram Srinivasan. For those of you who are new to Cybers, we are a cyber infrastructure project funded by the U.S. National Science Foundation. And we offer these free webinars to fulfill a key part of our mission, which is to train scientists on how to use Cybers and its computational resources. To that end, our webinar today is about the new user interface of our discovery environment, which is sort of the onboarding platform towards Cybers. Uh, let's take care of some quick housekeeping before we start. Um, today, it's webinar is approximately 30 minutes. We'll do questions and answers at the end of Sriram's presentation. Please mute your audio and open the Zoom chat window where you can type any questions there for Sriram to answer afterwards. Or please also type in any feedback on features or functionality that he talks about. The webinar is being video recorded and it will be posted on our website uh, by latest Monday afternoon for you to review at any time. In addition to this webinar, Cyverse offers other virtual training events and all of our learning materials are online. So please be sure to visit our website's learning pages to find out about more resources for both teaching and learning how to use computational resources. And now I'm pleased to introduce Sri Ram. He's our lead for our core software team. Uh, excuse me. Uh, Sri Ram joined Cybers in 2009 and has led the team since 2014 through countless support tickets, bug fixes, version updates, and now a full refresh of the discovery environment after more than 10 years in service uh, by the original interface. Also, congratulations are due to Sri Ram as he just got certified earlier this week as a project management professional. Hi, Sri Ram. Thanks, Tina. All right. Uh, uh, welcome everyone to yet another uh, version of the Cybers webinar. In this webinar, I'm going to be talking about the refresh that the Discovery environment is going to get, or uh, it's getting now, and it will be available for everyone uh, beginning the spring of 2021. Uh, for those uh, who are new to Cybers, uh, this webinar is an introductory series. So if you don't, uh, don't know anything about Cybers, that is fine. There is a zero entry requirement for this or for what I'm going to talk now today. Uh, Cyber supports all domains of life sciences. Uh, we have plants, uh, we, have, we support uh, people researching in virus, animals. Uh, we also even support uh, astronomy. So uh, the slide does say life sciences, but uh, we have uh, people from physics, astronomy, oceanography, like uh, countless uh, fields to say the least. Uh, you can store any kind of data, uh, any size. Uh, the first 100 GB uh, cost uh, you nothing. Uh, after that, you will have to just uh, justify or, or the reason for increased usage. Uh, uh, the domain is it, the Cybers platform is completely domain agnostic, meaning it doesn't care what kind of data you store or what kind of tools or applications you want to use. Uh, Cybers also provides API access on top of the user interface that it already provides, which means that you can build your own user interface to solve the requirements. Uh, in addition, it is extensible, meaning that uh, if you have hardware and just need the Cybers uh, software stack, we could use it, or if you want to add more hardware uh, into Cybers, we could do that too, or extend the Cybers products to build your own products. Finally, you could even install the Cybers product at your own premises and choose not to uh, use the general public version that is currently available now. You could have your own private Cybers products and just use it for yourself. Uh, just to give you some, uh, some background on how big Cybers is, uh, we have more than 82,000 users. Uh, uh, we have 23,000 plus active users in the discovery environment, uh, five petabytes of data, 9,000 plus access used worldwide. So far we have launched uh, around 400,000 jobs. Uh, we have helped launch more than 400,000 jobs just from the discovery environment. Uh, before I uh, go on to talk about what's being uh, updated and refreshed in the discovery environment, when we started this project 10 years ago, uh, these were some of the vision uh, that we described or we came up with for the discovery environment. 
uh, it should there should be zero entry barrier that means for people who wants to do science and they are not who are not familiar with the technology uh, they don't need to know computer science they don't need to know programming they can just come into the discovery environment and start using and the platform and do science uh, scalable support big data uh, facilitate collaboration uh, it's all about sharing your research with other uh, researchers and make the research reproducible uh, if you want to run the same analysis like five years from today uh, it should produce the same results and it should be be able to be shared with uh, your collaborators easy and then finally you could bring in your own docker containers apps tools uh, bring in your own computers and then integrate that with cyber hardware we could do that too uh, we support both web and command line apps right from the discovery environment so uh, why did we decide to refresh the DE? Like uh, Tina mentioned earlier, uh, the DE has been in production for 10 years now. The landscape has changed so much from what it was like uh, 10 years ago. The technology, uh, the science has changed. Uh, the size of data has been increasing day by day. Uh, the user expectations using these products have changed. We, ha we have heard so many feedback, so many pain points from the users. Uh, we thought this is a good time to actually uh, invest, invest, in, invest some time in refreshing the uh, uh, DE. Uh, along the side, the software that was used to build the Discord environment is no longer supported and there are licensing issues. So we thought uh, all this added up to say that, okay, this is the time that uh, we should invest uh, in refreshing the DE. Uh, uh, I'm not going to read the entire slide, but I want to highlight some of the uh, key features or improvements that are coming up in the uh, new version of the discovery environment. Uh, I want to highlight the performance improvements, uh, like 40 to 90% faster uh, uh, data loads, uh, uh, up to 60% improvement in apps and analysis listing. Uh, we are going to have a new global search. Uh, we are going to have new interface for doing bulk operations. All this is coming soon uh, for everyone. Uh, more improvements on uh, using the cyber's learning platform like YouTube videos. Uh, even you could watch this webinar from, from the discovery environment uh, in the future uh, because it will be available in the U cyber's YouTube channel and you should be able to watch these learning materials from right from the DE. Uh, use the DE from mobile phones. Uh, if you have an iPhone 5 uh, uh, pixel to some old phone, you should be able to still use the discovery environment. Uh, from there. Uh, the biggest change uh, that one might see is the login page is going to be looking slightly different because we are sh shifting from CAS to a new technology called Keycloak. Uh, this will support single sign-on. You should be able to use your cyber credentials. Uh, I want to highlight that uh, point here. No need to create new cyber IDs or anything like that. You will you can still use your existing cyber credentials, but we will also be supporting a social and institutional login, meaning that you should be able to use your personal Google ID to sign in or your own institutional uh, emails to sign in to the cybers. Uh, there is going to be a dashboard where you could find uh, recently used apps, analyses, uh, learn about all the new apps that has been published in the cybers platform, uh, read the news and events at a glance, and like I said earlier, you should be able to access the Cyber's YouTube videos from the uh, Cyber's uh, Learning, Cyber's YouTube channel. Uh, I'm uh, rushing through the slides because I want to spend more time on the demo. The, I'm just going to introduce you to the features, but uh, hold on tight. I'll be giving a, a, a very brief demo of all these features so that you could uh, see, see those for yourself. Uh, there is going to be a global search you should uh, you can search data apps analyses uh, from anywhere in the discovery environment without leaving the screen uh, you can filter the results and even access the detailed results page from there uh, we have introduced a concept of concept called bags bags think of think bags as shopping carts where you could collect uh, your data apps and analysis into one place and then finally you could do some bulk operation on it. For example, you have uh, collected like 10 different files from 10 different folders into a bag. From the bag, you can just hit one button to actually download all 10, 
all 10 of those files right from there. You don't have to click download 10 times. You can simply collect them in one place and then downloaded it from there. Or you could share uh, apps, analysis, or data from the bag. In the future, we'll uh, support multiple bags and have many more operations. Being, uh, look forward to many more operations being supported from here. Uh, open access to public data and apps. Um, in the current discovery environment, anything you have to do, you have to sign in or log in first. Uh, we have heard from a uh, lot of people that uh, they don't have, like they want to just access the public community data set uh, and uh, they don't want to really sign up, but just uh, browse the data set. So uh, we have made sure that you could search and access more than one petabyte of uh, public community data set that is already published in Cybers. Uh, you could search uh, 500 plus public apps. And all this data is going to be uh, indexed by web crawlers like Google. So in future, when you are uh, searching for a data set from the Google, you'll be linked directly to the uh, data set right from the Google search result. So this is a good part. I'm going to show you a demo of all these features. Uh, like uh, Tina said, if you have any questions, post them in the chat and I'll, I'll be happy to answer them at the end of this presentation. So first thing first, I want to just show, uh, this is how the login screen looks now in the current discovery environment. But if you go to the new refresh, this is how it looks. Uh, mind you, I'm in a page called sonora.cybers.org, but you don't have to go to a different page. Uh, this new interface will be available from the same URL that is de.cybers.org. You don't have to remember that uh, because this is not going to change. So uh, when you come to a landing page, uh, you already see this is the dashboard. Um, all the news is here. Oh, I even see the event that I'm presenting today. It's right here. So you won't miss any of the events or news. Uh, that's all right up here. Uh, like I said, all the YouTube videos are here. You should be able to watch from here. And these are all the public, public apps that have been published in Cyber's Discovery Environment platform recently. So those all show up here even without logging in compared to just uh, an orange button that says logging right now. So I'm going to log in now. And this is the key cloak login page. Uh, it's uh, it, it looks different, but like I said, uh, you should be able to use the existing Cybers credentials. Now that you have logged in, uh, there is a little bit more relevant information. There is still news and events, but you also seem, see something called recent analysis. These are all the analysis that you have launched. Uh, these are all the jobs that you have launched, and they show up right here in the dashboard. In addition to that, uh, you have notifications, you have bag, and you have uh, custom in-app chat for support. So uh, before uh, I move on, I'm going to just uh, so I'm going to just uh, go to data window now and then start introducing to new features from there or show how it looks different from right in the new interface when you compare it to the existing one. So I'll just log in here as well. All right, so uh, this is how the data window looks in the current discovery environment compared to this one. Um, you still, uh, st still get to see the whole list of data. You can still browse everything like or you used to do, but it looks different than how you are used to from here. All right, uh, now I'm going to show you uh, ways to upload your file uh, you can hit upload from here or you could simply drag and drop files from your computer. So I'm going to just going to drag and drop here. That's going to do something. Okay, there it is. There is something called an upload queue that tells you uh, what's currently in process and its status. Right now, there is a green check mark here, which, may, which tells me that the upload is complete and the screen has automatically refreshed. I'm going to open that file. It's going to be a big cybers. Yes, there it is. 
I could view details of that file right from here. I can see permissions all right from here. If you want to search for go to community data, you couldn't do that right from here. This is all the public data set. Uh, remember the feature to access this public set data set without logging in is still in development, but I expect that to be available when, when we release the Sonora to general user public in spring 2021. Said that, now going back to my folder, I want to also show something about, uh, so this is how you can do URL imports. That one. Okay, yep. So this is how uh, URL imports are done. It gives you immediate feedback that the job has been submitted and you also get a notification right from here. Moving on, I'm going to go back to dashboard a little bit and then start doing some search. So I'm going to search for an app called Word Count. That's my favorite app, one of everything. That is, import is done. Searching now. I can see the app here. You can select that. It's going to take you to the app and then you can launch that app right away. So uh, again, I want to uh, compare it to how the app launch screen is in the current DE versus how it has changed here. So I'm going to remember in, in the current DE, there is no global search. So you have to open the app window first to run the app. This is how it looks in the current discovery environment compared to here. You could jump the steps from here to here or directly go to review and launch. I'm going to launch a job. Go here, I'm reviewing my parameters. I can just hit launch. That's going to launch a job and automatically take me to the analysis screen. Yep, there it is and the status is here. Right, what else? Right, I was in search. So let's do a little bit more search. I want to search all the CSV files. Let's see what it shows. So it shows up all the results here, but I want to just see the data results. So I'm going to filter it by data and then hit CSV again. Let's see. Come on. There it is. So I have like the top 10 results here, but I want to view all the results. So you could click this one and that's going to take me to a details results page, hopefully. Hmm. Let's do it again. Maybe I didn't click it. There it is. All right, now it's searching again. So it tells me there are 736 results. Uh, it does do a little bit of pagination so that the results are loaded page by page. You could click load more to view load more results at the bottom of the screen. So this is just filtering up, filtering up and showing just the data results. If you want to go back and search just the app, you could do that right from here by selecting the appropriate filter. It's done. Now going back to dashboard. What else? So let's do something with the bags. So let's see if I want to share some files. I'm going to add it to bag. Go to apps and see an app under the development. I'm going to select this app and then add it to bag. And then I'm going to analysis. and then select an analysis and then add it to a bag. So now this is all in bag. When I open the bag, it's all the items I have selected is here. I can uh, select, click hit download. It will download just the data items here. If I click share, then I can share all these things from one place. This is, uh, by the way, the new sharing interface. 
uh, uh, compare it to how it looks from data here. Let's do that. This is how the sharing used to look and that's, we have changed it to look like this. Uh, you should be able to search by username or email address. One important thing we have changed and we like to get your, get everyone's feedback is that uh, you have to enter the whole Cybers username or the Cybers registered email to search someone. Uh, we won't be showing any more partial search results uh, due to data privacy concerns. Um, example, GDPR. So you will have to know the complete username of the user you are trying to share with. So you could modify the permissions and then hit that. All right, that's going on. That is done. And as usual, you should get notifications here. Okay. That completes that. One last thing, I have a notifications. I could hit this one to go and view the outputs of the uh, analysis that I just ran. And then you can hit back button, use the browser back button. Uh, well, maybe I couldn't. That seems to be broken, but anyway, you should be able to use the browser navigation buttons to move between pages, is what I was going to say. So that completes the demo portion of this webinar. I'm going back to the slide. Uh, uh, the GitHub repo uh, link is here, and I think Tina is going to drop the uh, full link in the chat as well. Please feel free to uh, uh, come with contributions. Uh, your contributions are all welcome. This is an open source project. So we welcome anyone who has uh, contributions to the project. Uh, uh, this slide just lists the uh, technology stack or the uh, software stack that we use to build this uh, or refresh the current discovery environment. Uh, I mean, uh, refresh the discovery environment. We use uh, Docker, Kubernetes, um, Material UI. Uh, it's based on Google's material design. Uh, we are using it for improving the UI and the UX and the product experience. Uh, React framework and Node.js. Node, Node uh, now this is important timeline for the release. Uh, even today you could go to sonoda.cybers.org to start using the new interface. But remember this is still in development. So you will see some quirks. Uh, uh, you will see some uh, bugs like even the demo you saw something is not working. So we are still developing this product, testing this product. Uh, your, we welcome your feedback. If you find any issues, please feel free to use the in-app in -app, uh, chat and uh, drop us a line that what you find uh, wrong or you have just a feedback, hey, this color doesn't suit well, probably this icon doesn't make sense. Anything right from a small feedback to even if you find a grammatical error in a message, uh, we are happy to receive those feedbacks and make it right. Right, uh, the sun, uh, we are planning to sunset the current discovery environment uh, in the summer of 2021. Uh, we are also uh, updating the documentation, manual, and uh, everything that is related to the current E to reflect the new product. Uh, some uh, information on the roadmap or what's beyond this refresh. Uh, uh, we want to support uh, from the DE itself to actually configure a third party server. If you have your own server and you want to attach it to the cybers resource for running just your analysis, we, we want to support that use case. That's bring in your own compute. And the next as app versioning, right now, if, the, if there is a Jupyter uh, lab and if there are 10 different versions of Jupyter lab, right now it's listed as 10 different apps, but what would be more convenient is to actually select Jupyter lab and just before launching, you want to select the right version and then just launch. Uh, that we are going to fix the app versioning for that. And then the last one, last huge item is integration with third party storage servers like uh, S3 buckets, where you have data outside Cybers, but you still want to use Cybers computation and tools and containers. Uh, we are going to support for you to browse those data sets and launch jobs using the data set that is outside the uh, Cybers data store. 
So those are the three big items uh, I can talk about in the roadmap. And actually that concludes this webinar and I'll be happy to answer any questions at this point. Great, thank you. Thank you, Sri Ram. Um, there are some questions, so I'll read those now. Okay. Should we still use CyberDuck for bulk imports or is just dragging all files at once uh, still how to work that? That's a good question. You should still use the CyberDuck. Uh, the web hasn't changed much to support uh, large file uploads. There are still going to be connection timeouts when you're uploading, like uploading a 10 GB file. Uh, there are there is a still possibility of a connection timeout and you will lose the upload pathway. So that is not going to change. You will still need to use CyberDuck or I commands uh, or the preferred tools that is not preferably a web-based thing. Okay. Um, the next question is for me. I think the bag uh, element feature is really cool. Can you have multiple bags at the same time? And is there a limit on the number of files a bag can hold? At this point, we don't support multiple bags, but we are planning to add that feature, add that feature in a later point in time. But there is no limit for how many items you can have in a bag. Oh, uh, thanks for bringing up that question. I forgot to. <clears throat> show something, you could log out uh, and log back in. <coughs> Excuse me. Your bag will be still preserved. So all my bag items are still here. So you 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 uh, set up a bag in one computer and go to a different computer, it's still there, it's not lost. Until you do something with it, either share it or download it. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. Uh, next question, is the data store GDPR compatible? Um, I am not entirely sure, but uh, the uh, as cybers are completely working towards making every product G GDPR compatible. So I don't know whether it's compatible today, but we all, I can say that we are all working towards that. Okay. Um, can we still request new tools or do we have to add them ourselves? You can still request new tools. Um, we haven't built that feature in yet, but uh, it should be available soon. Okay. How did you prioritize which changes to make? Were there certain things that users requested the most? Yes. So uh, before we started on the refresh, we conducted some uh, user studies. Uh, we got there, we solicited feedback from a few different groups of people and then found out what are the major uh, issues with the current this current E and what needs to be changed to fix that. Beyond that, we also have 10 years of support tickets and collaboration opportunities where we have heard people telling us a few different things. Excuse me. So we use both of those to identify uh, points that identify places that needs improvement. Beyond that, we knew that the UI and UX needs to be improved just because uh, of the landscape that technology has changed so much. People are using mobile phones for everything. Uh, and the current discovery environment did not work with uh, tablets or a small mobile phone or uh, even a big screen. So, so we wanted to fix that, uh, make the UX user experience right. So that's all the inputs we got from the users. Okay, has, uh, has the metadata process changed and how has this affected the DOI request process? DOI stands for Digital Object Identifier. The DOI process has not been uh, integrated into the new UI yet, but if you have any specific feedback, please uh, email us. I will, we can even set up a meeting to discuss and talk about that. That is a very important feature. So. If you have any thoughts, I will be happy to sit with you and get some feedback. People want to keep making your roadmap longer and longer, Sri Ram. Uh, one more question. <clears throat> will the tooltip pop-up be available? When will app creation be available? I, I'm not entirely sure what is a tooltip pop-up, but if you're talking about contextual help, uh, if I uh, hover on a data, there is a tooltip, and we are planning to make that as a standard throughout the application that wherever there is an icon, it's going to tell you what is it about. And a good question about uh, app building interface, that's going to be a, 
a priority thing that we have just started working on a design. And like I said, the timeline for the whole uh, uh, DE to be, to be available is spring 2021. And at that point, I anticipate metadata, uh, DOA request, uh, building your own apps, uh, and then requesting the like, installing a new container or a tool. All those things should be in by spring 2021 for sure. Okay. Um, I see a number of the team online. Um, if anybody else wants to add anything else to the conversation, you're welcome to unmute yourself and do that. Um, in the meantime, thank you all so very much. And Sri Ram, I know you've put a lot of time into not only the user base, but also making this presentation for us. Um, I'd like to uh, remind you that this video will be posted on our website. And to let you know that in two weeks, our next webinar will be on Phyto Oracle, a scalable distributed workflow manager for analyzing high throughput phenotyping data. So stay tuned for that. Uh, again, if you're on our mailing list, we'll send you reminders about that. Are there any final questions for Sri Ram? Otherwise, there's some thanks for you in the chat window. And thank you so much, Sri Ram. I really appreciate that. We'll see everybody back here in a couple of weeks. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Tina.